motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21220 is approved. Item five on the agenda is a presentation on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act by the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, specifically Kate Gordon, the Senior Advisor to Secretary Jennifer Granholm. And Commissioner Paratek, do you want to introduce Ms. Gordon? Absolutely. I'd be pl pleased to introduce Kate Gordon, who, um, as the Chair just mentioned, is the Senior Advisor to Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Kate has spent the past two decades working at the intersection of climate change, energy policy, and economic development, and is currently spearheading efforts at the Department of Energy to implement the funding made available by the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Kate will describe the funding available to the state of Michigan and to the energy and telecommunications utilities that we regulate. Kate, we're thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much. And I, I can see you're all looking up to your right. I, I hope I'm not a giant picture on a screen, but I bet I am. So uh, it's wonderful to see you. <laughs> Perfect. Luckily, I'm going to go to slides in just a minute so you can stop looking at me. But it's really an honor to be here. Thank you for your public service and um, uh, for everything you're doing in, in the great state of Michigan, which is second only to the great state of Wisconsin, where I'm from in my mind. Uh, so uh, let me put up my slides give me just a minute window okay hold on all right can you can you see those we can yeah perfect okay i'm going to do a very quick tour through the um, opportunities available for michigan under the bipartisan infrastructure law which we call bil or bill many people call ija or ija for the um for its official name um this will be fast. I did want to say that the slides that I'm using, which have much more detail on them, will be available to you, uh, to those listening. So uh, don't worry if I blow through a little bit quickly, you'll be able to see these. So this is a really significant opportunity for the country, um, for, uh, for Michigan, for the Department of Energy. This bill provides um, $1.3 trillion altogether across multiple agencies um, for infrastructure projects with 62 billion of that going to the Department of Energy. To put that in context, our annual appropriated budget is about $45 billion. So this is larger than our annual budget um, and includes 60 new programs for DOE and uh, uh, pluses up about 12 additional programs. The size and scope of this, um, of this bill uh, and also the fact that it really dramatically expands DOE's work into um, deployment and demonstration projects away from our fundamental role since 1977 of really doing basic science has actually led us to reorganize the entire department. So I put this up just to show um, our new, uh, what we call S3, but our Undersecretary for Infrastructure Office. This is a new office at DOE, a new undersecretary, and really emphasizes that expansion of our role into those demonstration deployment projects, those real steel in the ground projects. This is exciting for us. It's, it's a historic moment for the agency. Um, and I think for the country that clean energy infrastructure is being seen as part of the, the overall infrastructure picture in a significant way. So the infrastructure bill on energy does about four um, large buckets of things. I'm going to go into a little more detail on some of these that I know you have interest in or are particularly of interest to, um, to the utility sector. The first big area is, and these are mostly existing programs to be clear, expanding access to energy efficiency and clean energy. This is about $5 billion um, for a number of existing programs that you know well. The weatherization assistance program uh, is a big one, um, so additional funding there. Um, for the first time, $500 million for energy efficiency, renewable energy in public schools. Very excited about that um, program and the ability to leverage uh, additional funds through that. And of course, the Energy Efficiency Conservation Block Grant and state energy programs. These uh, primarily, other than the schools program, these are formula dollars that run through the state. So I'll talk more about that in a minute, but wanted to just make that point. I have in the slides detailed breakdowns of each of these programs that, um, again, you will be able to see when you get the slides, but just showing um, just the sheer kind of range of programs in that energy efficiency and renewable energy space. And I'll go to the next slide to say that that includes not only the programs I just talked about, but also um, significant new funding into the supply chain for clean energy. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute, um, but I really want to emphasize you know, the, the president called out um, supply chains for some critical industries. Semiconductors was one. Uh, batteries was another one. 
Um, solar was another one. We are um, doubling down. This bill gives us significant funding across the battery supply chain and um, particularly for uh, battery uh, manufacturing and recycling um, in which Michigan has a real competitive advantage given the infrastructure you have. Um, going on to a similar topic, the bill actually not only sort of drives investment in those kinds of manufacturing sectors across supply chains, but also drives quality jobs with a free and fair chance to join a union in those sectors. That is very, very important to this administration. It is captured in the bill. The entire um, infrastructure bill is covered by prevailing wage law under Davis-Bacon. Um, we are working very hard at DOE to ensure that quality job provisions make it into the non-construction pieces as well. And uh, this is critically important just to making sure that these um, dollars are actually creating economic prosperity. Um, in addition, we are putting dollars on the table. So again, more than seven billion across that supply chain for batteries. That's everything from critical minerals and rare earth elements all the way up through battery um, recycling. So very exciting. Clean hydrogen, a lot of people are paying attention to this. Um, our loan program office has expanded authority to loan in both the electric vehicle uh, and vehicle supply chain areas, as well as in um, uh, those critical mineral areas. So it's pretty exciting. Um, time and we're also establishing um, a significant amount of new infrastructure and workforce development and doing that in concert with the department of labor the third big area de delivering reliable clean affordable power to more americans this is really the grid part of the puzzle and this is i know of critical interest to all of you um, this is a significant amount of our 62 billion is this 11 billion in grants for grid resilience and that's resilience in the face of both cyber attacks and also um, impacts from climate change. So, um, you know, extreme weather, uh, flooding, wildfire, um, uh, extreme heat e effects, uh, those kinds of impacts we're seeing increasingly across the country. This also includes two and a half billion for transmission facilitation. Those are those high voltage transmission lines um, and smart grids. So going both big and small, uh, looking at looking at long range transmission as well as for smart grids. We will not achieve our goals on climate change or in our new energy economy and energy transition in this country without a significant investment into the grid. And that's what this this um, bill allows us to do. We're also um, continuing investment in, in nuclear power. Currently, the one uh, zero carbon um, kind of base load power source that underpins a huge amount of our, our clean energy economy today. This is includes six billion for the civilian nuclear credit program to um, help support plants that uh, and stop premature retirement of existing plants, as well as um, uh, new a new amount uh, uh, for for advanced nuclear, which I'll talk about in a minute, and also of course hydropower, another baseload um, net zero power source, uh, uh, more than seven billion seven hundred million in in helping those facilities stay open and safe as well. So more on the grid, lots and lots of pieces of that. Um, many different pieces. Most of these are competitive programs, except for the resilience, the big one, the resilience and uh, reliability one at the top there, which is um, which is a formula program to states, tribes, and territories. Importantly, I should say just as a note that um, in this section, the uh, the piece that's on rely resiliency, that second piece, um, we actually do have a prioritization in part two more islanded or isolated areas that are not uh, currently well served by the grid. So that's something to note. Um, also, this section includes a really interesting one billion dollar program. That's the third one down for energy improvements and energy demonstrations in rural and remote areas. And that's a really interesting program for some of those places that are kind of not in the more urbanized areas, maybe haven't captured some of the benefits of energy economy in the past but um, where there is a lot of opportunity across these supply chains. So more on that. Uh, there is, you'll see at the end here, also um, a, a requirement for utilities to promote the use of demand response. Unfortunately, no funding associated with that, but I did want to note that demand response is something that is called out as a priority in the bill. Transportation and EV infrastructure, another important area for Michigan. Um, this is a mostly this money is actually going through the Department of Transportation, not DOE. However, DOE is written into the bill to um, to work directly with DOT on these programs, given the key relationship between, of course, the transportation sector and the grid when we think about electrification. So we have actually established a new joint office on energy and transportation. 
This is deploying seven and a half billion dollars under the transportation budget of the bill. Uh, we have a couple of pieces of that, but our role really is in ensuring that that is done in a way that's very consistent with the build out of the electricity sector, with reliability, with security, making sure we're getting to those rural disadvantaged and hard to reach locations that have energy access issues today and also have a lack of access to electric vehicles. So that's a really exciting new, really exciting new joint office. And there's a number of these provisions are primarily, you can actually tell by the numbers um, on the side, the ones that start with four are in DOE's uh, budget, the ones that start with two or one are in transportation. Um, many of these are not in DOE's budget, but we have a couple pieces of this, as you can see here, including um, helping develop codes, uh, helping with uh, improvements in um, school facilities that also allows for electric vehicle and electric buses. Um, and of course, the entire section on that battery uh, manufacturing, recycling, and supply chain work, which is critically important to the EV sector. Finally, clean energy demonstrations is a big new part of the bill. This is 21.5 billion. It's a huge, huge slice of that 62. This is really new for us. These are clean energy demos and research hubs into these technologies that we know are part of the energy future that have not been de developed at scale, commercial scale to date, where government has a real role to help de-risk these industries. Um, clean hydrogen is one a lot of people are watching. We have money to build out a number of hydrogen hubs around the country. That's a competitive process. Carbon capture, direct air capture, and industrial emission, emission reduction is another big category through our fossil energy and carbon management program. And then there's this is the 2.5 billion for those small modular reactors that advance nuclear development. We've started, oh, I'll go back, an entire new office to work on these programs called the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations. That's part of our new Office of Infrastructure. So I uh, only have a couple more slides. I will say everyone wants to know when is the money coming out? Um, a couple of really important things to say about the bill. One is most of these programs are on a five or 10 year timeline, which is very exciting from sort of a sustainability perspective. This is not a program that's going to go away next year. This is a program that has embedded longer timelines so that um, states, cities and territories can can figure out how to get these transformative projects out the door. You'll remember with the Recovery Act that there was a real focus on shovel ready and on speed. We're trying really, really hard to get money spent out the door and spent, but make sure that it is creating sustainable, resilient, equitable infrastructure that creates high quality jobs and real economic prosperity in communities. That means stakeholder engagement. That means ensuring that those standards are written in. That's just a very deliberate process. And so we're, we're balancing those things out. And I think it's exciting that it's a longer time frame. Um, the funding is split between formula funding, as I said, and competitive funding. Most of it is competitive. Um, the way that we do competitive funding is we'll put out notice of intent um, often, and, and I'll show you in a minute where to find those. Um, we often follow that with what's called a request for information. I highly recommend responding to those requests. That's where you can weigh in and say, hey, you're you know, we think this approach doesn't make sense. Have you considered these technical issues? Have you considered these communities? We take all of what we hear from the RFI responses and then we put that into the funding opportunity announcement, which is really where the rubber hits the road and people can apply for the funding. Um, and those are starting to roll out now. We have only put out one funding opportunity announcement to date, and that is for the battery supply chain work, but um, which just went out. But we're starting to roll these out. Um, and, and as this says at the last bullet, we're on track uh, to roll about half of our 60 billion um, in FY22. Michigan has a lot of opportunities here, um, and we have actually provided a lot of support to Michigan already from the Department of Energy that I just wanted to note, um, in including home energy assistance under the rescue plan, the first of the big, I would frankly call it the first of the big energy bills of this administration. The American Rescue Plan included significant amounts of energy assistance as well as economic development support through the Economic Development Administration, and a lot of that's being used for energy planning. Um, we've been we held a state listening session in February. We have been issuing money through the um, through through our initial weatherization assistance program. We haven't allocated the full new amount yet, but we've been rolling out money through that. Um, the RFI for schools will be due uh, will be out in early April, and I think will be really an interesting place to watch for Michigan, particularly around um, weatherization, but also EV school bus eligibility. Um, and then the grid resilience RFI coming out late April and battery, two new FOAs for battery recycling in May. 
This is the site to bookmark energy.gov slash bill has all of the timelines, all of the links to all of the um, pieces as they come out. There are far more than this. I took this picture like a month ago, so there are far more than this available now. Um, it's very, very exciting to see what's already out and what's coming out every day. We're spending a lot of time on this inside the DOE, as you could imagine. I also want to point you to another really good resource. This is energycommunities.gov. This is a website or a clearinghouse that was put together by the Interagency Working Group on Coal and Power Plant Communities and Economic Revitalization. This is really an interagency group that the, that the president put together to focus on communities that are in transition from either generating or or from either extracting or generating fossil energy, so that includes a lot of power plant communities um, that are transitioning into new types of energy resources or new economic activities. Um, this is an 11 agency working group. We administer it at DOE. I spend most of my time on it. Um, we have put together this clearinghouse that's extremely usable. It doesn't look like a normal government clearinghouse. It's very easy to, to navigate. And it shows you not only the bill opportunities, but also existing appropriations across those agencies. And I really recommend it because energy communities have an enormous overlap with both with rural and remote communities, with tribal communities, but also there's just a significant number of power plant communities um, in Michigan and the surrounding area. These folks, um, Rose Dottie, I think you may all know, um, is our regional specialist for Michigan. She is your front door. She is the person who could tell you where to go and how to ask the right questions and who to ask. Um, she is fantastic. You can reach her and all the rest of them with that email address. And that is what I've got. So I think the regional specialists are critical navigators for DOE, though that energycommunities.gov um, uh, 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 site is really a useful resource. And then, of course, the DOE website itself. And I think that is what I have.